These are tips for making a precision part on an engine lathe. And we'll start with video number one, turning two dimension. We'll see the x-axis, the z-axis, the hand wheel scale, and we'll do witness pass. These are the very basics of turning to dimension. It presumes that your tolerances are wide open. And the very first thing that you need to learn about is these hand wheels. And the hand wheels have dials on them. On this one, it's held in by drag. You can move it to zero and it'll stay where it is. On this one, you gotta unlock it, spin it around, and set your zero. And that's important because you need to be able to establish the dimension. So we'll start right away. We're going to dial right up to the material and then move away from the material in Z only. And we'll pick a nice distance to get a clean surface and we'll go with 40 thousandths right now. But before we make that cut, we're going to reset the dial to zero. And this is what we refer to as our witness pass. and that'll help us establish a baseline, a number that we can work from. And we'll take a measurement, and we'll see right now that the measurement comes through. Well, the print dimension is 1.545, and the measurement we did is 1.585. So we need to remove 40 thousandths of material. So we'll turn the dial in, 40 thousandths, to take a 40 thousandths cut, but wait a minute. Check your dial and make sure that you're one for one versus two for one. Now what that means is that on a lot of dials, if you cut 40 thousandths on one side of the material, once it turns over, you're cutting 40 thousandths on the other side, there's a total of 80 thousandths, which puts you 40 thousandths under your number. So make sure you're one for one and not two for one. But on this machine, we're one for one, so we dial in 40 thousandths, and we'll take our next pass. And when we take our measurement, we'll see that we've hit our number. And always remember the machinist rule is to measure twice and cut once, because you can't put material back on. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Video number two, now we use a measuring device. This is simple identification of the outside micrometer. Here's a set. Let's take a look. Here's a zero to one inch micrometer. Here's a one to two inch. And you guessed it, a two to three inch micrometer. Now we'll take a look at the components. There's a ratchet knob. This is the thimble. It's the sleeve or the barrel. Here's the position lock. The spindle, the anvil, and the frame. And that's the basic micrometer. Thanks for watching. Video number three. Now that we know what it is, we'll learn to read it. Here's a basic video on reading the outside micrometer scale. These are outside mics. And here's a zero to one inch outside micrometer, and this is the scale. It's different from the depth mic scale. It reads in the opposite direction. Keep that in mind. You'll use the outside micrometer much more than the depth mic. Now we'll roll up to zero, which is actually one inch. Now we can see that one complete turn of the thimble equals 25 thousandths. Here's one inch, 975 thousandths, 950 thousandths, 925 thousandths, and 900 thousandths. 
Use the outside to end method because you'll always be measuring the outside of a diameter. Here is 800 thousandths. There's 750. And now backwards here, 751, 752, 753, 754, and 755 thousandths. There's 760. And there's 775 thousandths. I've got a gauge pin, 832 thousandths in diameter. And I will show it on the scale, 832 thousandths. And if you missed that, we'll count it down at 850. And that's 832 on the scale. Once again, at 850, 845, 840, 835, 34, 33, 832. And that's reading the outside micrometer. Thanks for watching. And video number four, now we'll learn what it should look like. Here's understanding surface finishes and textures. Surface finish is a general term used to describe the condition of material surface. A description of surface finish could include the surface's texture, roughness, waviness, and lay, flaws, or even coatings such as electric plating, anodizing, or painting. Surface finish of manufactured products can vary significantly. The two factors involved here are surface finish and surface texture. Surface finish, also known as surface texture or surface topography, is the nature of a surface as defined by the three characteristics of lay, surface roughness, and waviness. It comprises the small local deviations of a surface from the perfect flat ideal, a true plane. Surface texture is one of the important factors that control friction and transfer layer formation during sliding. Considerable efforts have been made to study the influence of surface texture on friction and wear during sliding conditions. Surface textures can be isotropic or anisotropic. Sometimes stick-slip friction phenomena can be observed during sliding depending on surface texture. Each manufacturing process, such as the many kinds of machining, produces a surface texture. The process is usually optimized to ensure that the resulting texture is usable. If necessary, an additional process will be added to modify the initial texture. The latter processes may be grinding, abrasive cutting, polishing, lapping, abrasive blasting, honing, electrical discharge machining, EDM, milling, lithography, industrial etching, chemical milling, laser texturing, or other processes. First up is lay. Examples of various lay patterns. Lay is the direction of the predominant surface pattern ordinarily determined by the production method used. Next is surface roughness. Surface roughness, commonly shortened to roughness, is a measure of the finely spaced surface irregularities. In engineering, this is what is usually meant by surface finish. It is quantified by the deviations in the direction of the normal vector of a real surface from its ideal form. If these deviations are large, the surface is rough. If they are small, the surface is smooth. Roughness is typically considered to be the high frequency short wavelength component of a measured surface, surface metrology. However, 
In the practice, it is often necessary to know both the amplitude and frequency to ensure that a surface is fit for a purpose. Roughness plays an important role in determining how a real object will interact with its environment. Rough surfaces usually wear more quickly and have higher friction coefficients than smooth surfaces. Tribology. Roughness is often a good predictor of the performance of a mechanical component since irregularities in the surface may form nucleation sites for cracks or corrosion. On the other hand, roughness may promote adhesion. Although a high roughness value is often undesirable, it can be difficult and expensive to control in manufacturing. Decreasing the roughness of a surface will usually increase its manufacturing costs. This often results in a trade-off between the manufacturing cost of a component and its performance in application. Roughness can be measured by manual comparison against a surface roughness comparator, a sample of known surface roughnesses. But more generally, a surface profile measurement is made with a profilometer that can make surface contact, typically a diamond stylus, or optical, like a white light inferometer. However, controlled roughness can often be desirable. For example, a gloss surface can be too shiny to the eye and too slippery to the finger. A touchpad is a good example. So a controlled roughness is required. This is a case where both amplitude and frequency are important. Waviness Waviness is the measure of surface irregularities with a spacing greater than that of surface roughness. These usually occur due to warping, vibrations, or deflection during machining. So these are the basics of surface finishes and textures, a good thing to know if you ever have a broken tool. That concludes our lesson. Thanks for watching. This is just a few selections from our library of micro training videos. Thanks to our contributors, and thanks for watching.